Hi everyone, welcome back into the gallery. I've been, you know, reading all your comments and uh, getting lots of emails. I turned on my computer this morning, 32 emails from you, and uh, that's okay. You know, it just takes me a while to get to all of them. So if you don't hear from me on comments or emails or something like that for, you know, a few days or a week, don't worry about it. I haven't know you. I haven't ignoring. I'm not ignoring you. It just takes me a while to get through to you. Um, I got a really interesting one email. It was from uh, uh, another artist wondering what that painting was that you see back there in the corner there. There's a little elk. See, I can look at it at the monitor there. There's a little elk right back there and stuff. So I took a, a picture of the wall so you can see that. Let's put that up and uh, you can see that's a, a larger painting. Um, it is uh, like three feet by five feet and I'm not quite completely done with it. I'm, sa I'm saving part of it for a new class that's coming up called The Art of Seeing where I want to finish that dough up onto the left corner, finish her up and, and um, uh, bring a little bit. She's coming out of the shadow so I've got to finish that area on there too couple of little paintings on the sides. I also paint a lot of these uh, these types of trays that you see here and one lady asked me about that and so I took a picture of a, a wall, a couple walls here of trays. I paint a lot of those. I do a lot of paint to sell here. The gallery that I'm painting in here, this is uh, our place out in Sydney, Nebraska. It's uh, 10,000 square feet of the gallery and the studio and then we have another place out in Pennsylvania uh, also but I really love it out here in Nebraska. We're out in the prairie and it's quiet and it's beautiful and uh, it's a great place to study and stuff. Okay, all right, let's continue on. Same type of thing that I have here, rose number 19. Same type of thing that I have here, um, same type of gray, got a little color coming through here. It's okay, I'm gonna cover it up. Same uh, palette, here's my Hansa, uh, my uh, yellow oxide, naphtha red light, burnt sienna, pine green, thalo blue, quinacridone violet, red violet black and white three quarter inch fusion flat brush and we could use a 10 or an 8 brush we'll probably use an 8 let's use an 8 today what's the difference between them um the size of the brush is going to give you more streaks and stuff to your pedal so a smaller brush will give you more streaks more movement to your pedal now i do a lot of the movement with my finger and it was really cute got a comment from one of you there that uh, i read that this morning i uh, yeah I, I love the movement on the finger i just got to stop from doing it too much yeah you can do it too much and it can take away that beautiful movement it's hard to stop though isn't it i mean i find i for me when i was developing these flowers it it's hard to stop you can't believe that you can get that look that quick but uh, it's best to stop and do it in another layer okay but uh, anyway let's go on let me show you one of the um, uh, uh, a really neat uh, what I call a negative painting flower and uh, we'll do a negative painting technique I'm going to take a bit of extender out here I'm going to take a touch of my thalo blue and my white here we'll make a nice light color. Sometimes I like to take this slightly over to the greenish side. We haven't done that too much yet. And with a little pine green. And, uh, you know, just make a nice bright light color here. Let's just put that down here. And uh, rather than following St. Andrew's Cross, which was the Dutch, I'm going to put it the rose on the same angle here. So I get a lot of power to it. So you can see the difference in it. You know, there's not your artist. There's not one specific answer to everything. That's what artists do is we create these techniques and ideas and movements and ways in which we do stuff. Um, there's not one correct answer you know, for, for everything. You're, you know, I always find it best to learn as much as you can, try as many different things, especially if you want to develop your own styles. Okay, let me come in just a touch closer. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to start uh, a gray. So we have here with our blue, a beautiful grays come from a complement, which will be some of your burnt siennas here. And I want to get a gray, but I want to keep this cool. So I'm going to add a little red violet to that. And this time what I'm going to do is, you know, normally we've been putting um, light colors. I'm going to start a darker color back here. So the back of the rose, I'll put the back of the rose probably right up around there. And we'll come right around here like this. Okay, just that nice rose shape. It's not perfect. And I'm going to blur this into the background here while that's wet here. We'll, we'll specifically paint the petals 
you know, a little bit different later. Let's put our turn down rows. We're practicing, right? You know, so many are writing on there. Can you show us how to do this? Can you show me how to do that? Yes, I can show you how to do all that kind of stuff. That's not really the the uh, purpose of this 30-day challenge. This 30-day challenge is to get you to practice, 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 practice. Okay. Um, this is kind of a bad thing. That's called a tangent line when I line my two roses up there right away. So I'm going to take this one a little bit uh, further out. And we'll tuck this one back in just a bit here. You don't want to line up everything, you know, perfect, perfect in a line. Now, I'm going to start with a, uh, one of my, this is one of my favorite roses, the Heritage Rose. Uh, and it's what I, we named the paint after, actually. We got the Heritage Rose. So I'm going to take a nice warm kind of a pink color and let's add that into the center so we're gonna have three circles the outside circle the inside circle here we'll stop a little short here we'll stop just a little short so we'll leave some of that nice cooler gray all the way out and around let's put some of this onto the turn but it'll come down to the bottom part of the circle here a little bit closer because the rose is turned okay now let's cool Let's take some cool color, some quinacridone, maybe a touch of the red violet. Let's drop down into the center third of this one, and we'll put that cool right down in there. And let that just soften that back edge here. Let's put a little bit of that cool on to this side. So the Heritage Rose starts out very, very red, very, very pink and red. And... Um, I believe it's a Dave and Austin rose, but it starts out very red, very pink, and then the, the older petals out here go more white. That's because they lose their color pretty quickly st sitting out into the sun. They lose their color. I grow these back in Pennsylvania, and I haven't tried growing them out here in Nebraska yet, but uh, I love the rose. I love that particular rose. I just love it. Anyway, so here's one that's going to be kind of turned. So you see three circles, the inside circle, the bowl. There you can definitely see the bowl. Matter of fact, let's put a little warmer yellow, like a nice brighter yellow. Sometimes you get that yellow glow at the base of the, uh, of the bowl of those heritage roses, which is quite pretty. Let's put a little bit of a glow, a little Hansa in there. Don't overwork it too much. Keep it, keep it kind, of, kind, of, kind of soft. Okay, but it's the movement. So you have this rounding movement here. It's rounding. Here we'll go do the petals in and out. Now, I'm going to put a little extender into this gray. We'll lighten it just a touch. And let's pull some. That's just a little bit too, uh, too pinky there. It needs a little bit more of this bluer color here into it. That's better. And... Uh, We'll draw some petals here from the outside in. We'll come around this side here. Try to vary the outside edges of them a bit. Push in and out. Push in and out so you get that nice growth in and out. But I want to have a variety of the edges there like that. And uh, we'll push in and out here like this. Like that. We'll pull, maybe pull out. Sometimes, like I say to you in all my books and everything, you know, don't always paint the same. Sometimes on the shadow side, I like to pull out. That gives a nice variation to the rose itself. You just want all this nice variation of lines. Let's uh, just be more uh, impressionistic out here because this rose is uh, out of our center of interest. Our center of interest is going to be right through here. So we won't be quite as specific with the petals and stuff like that onto this rose, okay? All right. So now let's build. Okay, we'll build. Let's take, we're going to do the petal edging technique. I'm going to take a little bit of red in the white, put my pink, my nice warm pink right here. Okay, put that into my brush. Okay, and then I'm going to grab some light here. And I'll just edge the brush like this. So I'm going to push that off and I'm going to edge the corner of the brush here. Pick up a nice little textured edge of the corner. So it goes pretty much across, but it's more textured edge right up in through here. And this is what I use to draw a petal edge right here like this. And I can then strike across it and then use that to push up and down like that. But that little, that little edge allows you to draw. Now you can build it a little bit more. Sometimes I'll build it like that, wipe my brush lightly like this, and 
sometimes pull up, sometimes pull down, create the movement that way up into that pedal. But you're building, it's, it's more than, you know, with a lot of the others, I'll, I'll stroke on pedals and stuff. This one, you're using that edge to kind of sketch a pedal. Okay, so I'll sketch right up along the line here. Let me sketch one right down like this. And then I'll pull down, letting it join into the into the rows this way. This gives you that light little petal edge onto your rows. Now, if anything starts to dry and you want to smooth it out, you can take a drop of water, touch in there, and push it out. Uh, this is not, it's a little bit dry there. But remember what I said, you can always take a drop of water. Make sure your finger is kind of clean. Take a drop of water, push it right here, and see how you can soften that right away right into that edge out there into that color so it's really that drop of water works so very well for what we do here let's take some of this pink around and I can draw little petals in like this I can take a little drop of that water push it right there like that push that around okay you can uh, use these to chisel some of these petals here and what I like to do is I'll put some movement here. We'll do a little more simplistic one here. Put some movement around in there like that, like in that center. Then I'll take a little bit of my red violet, maybe a bit of that red with that red violet so it doesn't go quite too cool. And I can tap that around and push that around like this, painting out some of the light. That's a different way to make centers of roses here painting out some of the stuff that you don't need. So you can go back and forth using that little corner of the, the brush here and make some quick little marks for like smaller little petals in there like that, see? And then you can touch into your um, reds and stuff and soften them out. But you can get a large variety of looks. Let's lighten that up a bit, put just a bit of that red cooler reds back through there. Just makes them kind of pretty. There's all kinds of ways. You want to come around. Let's put some of this. Pick up a little bit of our light. Drop some light petals down and around here like this. Push those right into that edge there. So I can... I'm painting for movement right now and then really I, I come back with a just a tiny bit of the light like this. And that's really what you can use to kind of draw around, sketch around your petals here. And sometimes it's nice to look at a real rose when you see, and all you're doing is, it's almost like putting on a pattern or sketching what a rose will look like um, when you use this petal edging technique like this. You know, you're just sketching here what the edges of a rose will look like. But it gets you a different, a different look to a rose here, you know, which is kind of fun. I, use, I, I paint all different kinds. I'm going to build this up a little bit lighter to the front of this rose here, pulling down. That'll bring more power to the front here. Matter of fact, I'm just going to reset this one real quick just by, just because I want to have this movement here. And that's easy to reset. Just take a little bit of the light on your corner and just kind of draw the next petal down like that. Pull like that. And see you create that next little petal right in there. And um, you can uh, pull some of these down and get that nice movement. I love to preserve that nice rose movement there. Like that, that's kind of pretty. Let's come out to the outside here. Come out to the outside here with some of our light and uh, we'll put the light edge of this rose here, push in and out, let some of that come down, pull down. I'm putting a little extender into this just because I like that slippery feeling like I told you before. You know, I like that slippery feeling. Let's draw the outside edge of this one here. Pull in, pull in, pull in like that. Push in and out to create that. So by pushing in and out like that, you. Uh, you leave a little bit of shadow for the uh, next rose to come, for the next rose petal to come in. Let's put one right out here like this. There's one here. And uh, let's draw this one right out here and let these just kind of come out. 
I like that little bit of transparency that comes to a rose like this. Now, this petal's coming down a little far, so what I'm gonna do is take a bit of my violet, my orangey kind of color here, and reset that bowl right there like that. Just push that roundness. Remember, you always save that bowl. That's what makes your rose so pretty. You know, you always save that bowl, find that bowl. Let's come back, take a little more light, take a little pink with that too. A little bit of light. Let's come right in here and set a lighter petal, stopping right there at the bowl here. Build that up a little bit lighter. A little more paint. Use lots of paint, lots of paint. Pull in, stop by that bowl and then finish that off by pushing those together. It does what I call incorporates the petals together. You could use that little edge here to kind of define the edge of this one again. Here, wherever you want to edge that petal in there. Let's pull one right in here and down. Pull that petal around. Stop right in there someplace. Push that right into the bowl. Okay. Folding them together. Folding them together. And it is hard. It is hard to uh, figure out how to pull these petals and stuff like that together. You know, you can use a real rose for reference. And I did for a long time. And, and now I've painted so many thousands of these roses. I just see them in my mind. So I just paint the petals. But, and I fold them together. But uh, there's a lot of different ways to bring them all together. Now, I'm going to restate this right up here into the front, bring a little more light right up into the front, but I don't want to lose that roundness of the bowl, so I'm just going to push that right up like that into the roundness of the bowl. Get a bit of that roundness there, like that. And around. So you can see you can construct. Let's close off this side a little bit here. I'm going to go to a cooler pink. And in other words, this is opening up. I'm going to close this down, round into the rows here, round this around this side. So I'll put that cooler color right there because that's on the shadow side. Then we'll just use that petal edging technique here, just the corner, kind of draw it right there. Like I say, I'm showing you some of the simple techniques that I use to create the roses here. There's a lot more because you go to the website and you look at some of my books and stuff like that there's a lot of techniques that I use this is just a few of them but they're the ones I want you to practice you know during this during this uh, 30 day challenge because they're the ones that add, can make you uh, paint a pretty rose can get you to paint a pretty rose let's take that petal edging technique just a little bit of it here and set back a lighter petal here let it die around and just push right into that roundness there. And that, see how that just sets that petal there? You can maybe get another light little petal right here to close off that roundness there. That makes a pretty little row, see? Just like that. And let's uh, come in and uh, do this one real quick. Draw some edges here, pull down. Keep this one really simplistic. Just push the color around. And see, it doesn't take too much for something like this. Let's put a little more of our reds and stuff. It doesn't take too much for here for this one because we already have one that looks like a rose. So if we get any of these colors around anywhere in here, it'll start looking like a rose. Just turning that movement, getting that movement, right? And uh, it'll start looking like a rose because the other one's making it look like a rose. Does that make sense? So... Let's put a, a little bit of the light color out here right into that. See my dirty brush of my reds and stuff there. That's kind of nice. Let's draw in some light petals coming down. Push that right into the bowl. Sometimes I think I, I paint the prettiest roses when I move really fast. Really, really fast. Now, some of you that have been posting photos up into our academies and stuff, when I bring two roses in here like this, I want you to listen real careful. When I bring two roses in here like this, uh, I can look at your your painting and you're painting to avoid it. Like you don't like these to collide. So what I want you to do, and that's a habit, and I had that for the longest time. 
uh, is blur, like blur these areas together, those together, and then pick which one you want on top. Don't let your roses uh, paint like they're, the petals like they're avoiding each other. See how much more natural that is? When they're overlying each other. So I may blur these together right here like that. And then push these together. You get a much prettier weaving of the petals of the roses together. Both the roses when you have something like that happening, okay? So don't, don't leave little spaces. You're leaving little spaces in between your petals and because uh, you're afraid to hit the other rows. I know that because I did that for years. I did that. I wrote a lot of books, made a lot of DVDs with it too. And it's not that it's bad. It, it, you can make a prettier rose by not colliding them like that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now I could lighten it up a little bit more and add a little bit more to it, but I think that's pretty good for, for today. Let's um, uh, go in and do some negative painting. So I'm going to take some uh, pine green and some some burnt sienna will come right in through here and we'll negative paint this painting with the background. This will set the nice contrast of the front of the rose here, okay? The nice contrast of the front of the rose. Let's just come right around that corner a bit. Let's uh, put just a little lighter, maybe a little of this gray, even a little of this blue into here. And uh, we'll push just a little bit of that back through here what I call my little brush dance of working some of that around here. Around like little back leaves, very suggestive back there. I like that kind of stuff. You can make a, a, a more shaped leaf here, a more shaped oval shape. Maybe one coming out right here. And I do like to do that while that's wet. Just take off part of the edge. I like that kind of movement on that. Let's increase the burnt sienna. Pine green come down a bit here. A little bit darker. A little more contrast. Maybe put that nice stem out there. Get real sketchy. Move fast. Just let what happens happen. Don't try to make it perfect. That slows you down. When it slows you down, it starts to get stiff. And I know, I mean, there was some stuff that I fought for the longest time. I thought I had to take my time and make it perfect, but it actually started to look prettier when I didn't do that. See that negative painting just makes that edge of that petal. Makes it look like you know what you're doing. There you go. And let's just add a few other little things here couple little leaves coming down lightly casually there so and you can see you can paint even a rose like this pretty darn quick it's a nice soft rose pretty darn quick we could lighten it up and add some more contrast I've painted others with even more contrast that's up to you you know um, I'll put a little chisel mark here for the little leaf centers or something like that a little mark or two of some of that contrast color here. I like that kind of stuff. Maybe a smaller little petal out here, smaller leaf here, coming that way. Like I said on earlier ones, you know, the younger leaves, smaller leaves, more of an orange color, but I'll just go ahead and do that one this time. Maybe a touch of contrast right in here though. Gives a little bit more contrast. That's where you're judging. And then you look at your rows. You know, do you want to have, um, you know, do you want to have any more stuff going on here? Do you want to use the petal edging here and maybe uh, pop on the idea of another petal or two? Just kind of let that dance around here like that. You can see how you can close up your rows and stuff there. Um, real quick little marks. Do you want to have any more, you know, light edges here? Here like that, pull down, put a little more light on that rose there. Maybe an edge here, a little more light. You could go to a smaller brush and be even more detailed, but I think this is, I think this is kind of fun. We're at, <clears throat> we painted this in under 25 minutes, so I think that's, 
pretty good for a little bit more complicated rows like this. Just a little bit more complicated. Pull some of those nice petals in there. Maybe we'll maybe we'll scoop around here just with the edge of our brush. Put some movement here just on that corner of the brush here. Pull that in. Right there, we'll push some of that right there into like the look of another petal there. Maybe a touch of that right around this side. So you do use a tiny bit of white on the corner or light color on the corner of your petal or your corner of your brush to do the petal edging technique and you kind of sketch the edges of your petals here. You can do other things, but uh, that sketching just makes them look a little different here. And it's kind of a fun little rose. All, all kinds of ways to do them. All kinds of ways to do them. But that's kind of fun. That's kind of a fun coloring. A little different using the petal edging technique like that and some negative painting up front. Negative painting can make you have nice translucent petals. But, um, yeah, and then, you know, back out through here. Don't be afraid of letting some of that go, you know. Just let some of that uh, light color here or some of these back edges and stuff like that just let some of that go just push around just paint the rounding movement of your rose it's all you really need in there and that'll make a nice a nice rose for you okay there's number 19 there's number 19 11 more to go and uh, we're on our way okay so give that one a try then paint it again and again that's how you get better repetition 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 watch the clock you know, if you're still painting them at an hour, try to work with it a little bit less. Try to use more of your finger. Push it real quick and get out. It's always going to look a little wrong to you as the artist. Okay? It's always going to do that. you got to get that confidence to push past that. Get, get that confidence to, to say, okay, I'm going to just keep going. Just keep going. And um, because you, if you get bogged down in all that detail and want to make that thing perfect, it just gets stiff. Okay? That's why we do these timed exercises. All right. See you on number 20.